Hey there all YouTubers. Today's the big day where I'll be preparing that brisket that I've wet aged for 45 days to see if it makes any difference. Here's the brisket that I had in the refrigerator. Did not touch it. That's what it's looking like. Let me get it cleaned up. Okay, so I got it out of the, the package and I rinsed it off and I gotta say there's no funky smell or anything like that to it. it, it it's, it's good. It's all good. One thing I did notice, looks like there was a stray knife whenever they were processing this to kind of cut, cut through like that. That kind of sucks, but hey, we'll deal with it. All right, let me get this uh, trimmed up a little bit. Okay, so that's what we're looking looking like here. I didn't go too crazy cutting off all the fat, but I did trim some of that funky funky meat that gets on this side here. Took out some of that hard fat right there. <clears throat> the hard fat here. Got that blood vessel out of there. Trimmed all that. I'll be able to get rub down in there. Then on the back side, some hard fat here. But basically, I'm, I'm leaving a good bit on there because I'm going fat side down in with this smoker here. So, that's, if you guys could see that, that's kind of what I trimmed off there. That nasty shit there. Alright. Okay, so for the binder, all I'm putting on here is a little bit of water. For the rub, I have Traeger Prime Rib Rub that I put in the spice grinder to make it all powder. I don't want those big bits on there. I'll be using Holland Smokes Coffee Rub on top and adding a little bit of extra cracked black pepper. That's what we're going with. Okay, I just went with a, a light dusting of rub on the fat side because I like the fat. I'm going to be eating the fat. So let's flip it over. and Get the top side. Okay, so I have to say that Howling Smoke Coffee Rub sure gives a beautiful color to that. Look at that. That is so nice. I just want to point out that the flat grain is running like this. I made a little slit right here so I know to cut like that. That's how I'm, I'm, that's how I'm remembering which way that the, uh, the grain is running. So, it's the morning. I'm going to wrap this up in foil, put it back in the refrigerator. It's going to be in there for um, probably another 10, 11 hours and then I'll get that smoker set up. So that's what we're doing. Back in the refrigerator. Okay, for the smoker we're going to be using the Masters of Metal smoker. I'm just going to take a second to explain how I'm, I'm setting this up. So i got the original Kingsford here. And I'm going to put just the top, top filled right in the center. Then after it gets going, then I got some mesquite and some apple that I'll throw in there. Instead of using the water pan, what I have here is three layers of ceramic briquettes. All placed strategic to where there's not going to be any direct heat coming up. Any gaps or spaces are covered by the next layer of ceramic briquette. This is going to be an indirect cook, but what it's going to allow is the fat dripping and the juices dripping down 
they're going to vaporize and they're going to give that extra extra added layer of flavor that I like and what I'm going for on this cook. Okay, so what I got here is the heavy metal kettle set up. Got the lid on. Top vent is going to be completely closed. I'll have my air vent here and my air vent there. I got my grate up top here sitting on those stainless steel bolts just like that. The brisket is going to be laying here and the dome is going to be here. The dome is going to be constantly filled with smoke and heat. It's going to be hot up here with the vents down here. It's going to force the smoke down around the meat and out. Hopefully this will help get more smoke and more heat, which is going to mean less fuel usage. And there's the briquettes. Okay, we got it all put together. Set the stoker for 225. Okay, so as the pit is coming up to temp, I have my Maverick ready check. One is going to be in the point. I have that temp set at 201. The second probe of the ready check is going to keep track of the pit temp because this is going to be going overnight. I have the high low set at 250 and 200. Just in case anything happens in the middle of the night, this will go off. It will alert me. That's what we're looking like. My second Maverick I have in the flat. That I'm going to set at 195. I want to see The temperature difference between the flat and the point. Hopefully they cook evenly, but I doubt it. The point's going to take a little bit longer, so we'll see. But that's how I have it. Three probes, two different Mavericks, Masters of Metal Smoker. Rock on! Okay, there it is. It's on. Here we go, closing the lid, ain't going to mess with it, ain't going to touch it, ain't going to spritz it, ain't going to wrap it, just going to let it rock and roll all night long. Well here we are in the early morning, this thing's still rocking after that first load of charcoal, it's been 10 hours. We're in the stall here. The flat is 190, or the flat is 162, and the point is 160 right now. Temps are dropping a little bit. I'm probably going to have to stir up these coals a little bit and check it out. All right, that's where we're at. 10 hours in, still rocking. Okay, after 20 and a half hours, let's take a look at this. The point is at 200 and the flat is at 94. I don't know how that happens, but that's what it is. I swear I haven't looked at this at all. This is the first time since I put it in. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, wow. Look at that. Man, oh man. 20 and a half hours. I'm going to get it off and we're going to wrap it up because we want to eat tonight. Going to let it rest for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. We'll see. Okay, so into the warm oven. I don't have a cooler. 
wrapped up there on warm about 170. Well guys, I got that brisket off just in time because look, it's a total downpour. Oh well, the flowers like it. That's what it's looking like. Smells pretty good. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to separate these. So I got my my chef's knife here, and I'm just going to go down. I'm not using the, the sharp edge. I'm using the back edge, and just going to kind of work my way down. And okay, I made my little cut there, and I know that the grain is running this way, so I'm just going to slice just like this. On the flat, see what that looks like. I don't know if you could see that nice smoke ring. Wow, that's hot. Whoo, very hot. I'd say that's that's done. Let's give a taste here. Now let's get a slice from that point. Okay, so now here's my favorite part, the point. This is what it's all about. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Well, are you kidding me? To be honest, there's some things I would do again with this, and there are some things I won't do again. But just like all of my experiments, it's all just an experiment. It's not saying this is how you do it. This is just how I'm doing it at a particular time. Just having fun, exploring different ideas and concepts, and, you know, trying to make some decent barbecue and I'm pretty happy with this me too nice bark if I had more time I would let this rest probably for at least three to four hours But under the circumstances, I'm pretty happy with it. Now with the wet aging, would I do it again? Yes. I would probably go maybe 60 days next time just to see what that does. This was a 45 day. I would try a different setup on the smoker or a totally different smoker. but. Hey, it just depends on how I feel and what I want to experiment with it and what I want to try. So, that's what we did today. So, all of you guys, keep on smoking and rock on. Okay, so there's our brisket dinner. Brisket homemade macaroni salad by Mrs. HMB. Homemade vegetable salad, Mrs. HMB. Looking good.